Ajnana was one of the Nastika or heterodox schools of ancient Indian philosophy, and the ancient school of radical Indian skepticism. It was a Sramana movement and a major rival of early Buddhism and Jainism. They have been recorded in Buddhist and Jain texts. They held that it was impossible to obtain knowledge of metaphysical nature or ascertain the truth value of philosophical propositions, and even if knowledge was possible, it was useless and disadvantageous for final salvation. They were specialized in refutation without propagating any positive doctrine of their own. Topic. Sources All of our knowledge of the Ajnana come from the Buddhists and Jain sources. The Ajnana viewpoints are recorded in Theravada Buddhism's Pali Canon in the Brahmajala Sutta and Samanaphala Sutta and in the Suyagadamga of Jainism. Along with these texts, the sayings and opinions of the skeptics Ajnanika, Ajnanina has been preserved by Jain writer Salanka, from the 9th century, commenting on the Sutra Kritanga. Salanka considers skeptics, those who claim that skepticism is best, or as those in whom no knowledge, i.e. skepticism, is evident. Apart from the specific technical meaning, Salanka also uses the word Ajnanika in a more general sense to mean anyone who is ignorant. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origin The traces of skepticism can be found in Vedic sources such as in the Nasadiya hymn and hymn to Sraddha faith in Rig Veda. In Brahmanas and early Upanishads doubt regarding a person's existence after death is cast, while the Yajnavalkya argued for the impossibility of knowing the ultimate reality or the Atman. However the flourishing of skeptical thought seems to have occurred in a period with diverse, conflicting, and irreconcilable theories, regarding morality, metaphysics, and religious beliefs. It is natural, in the absence of a commonly accepted criterion of truth, for some people to wonder if any theory could be true at all. The skeptics specifically pointed to the conflicting theories of Atman and the requirement of omniscience, and hence the criticism of omniscience, to obtain true knowledge. A proliferation of viewpoints existed during the period immediately preceding the rise of Buddhism, as attested in the Buddhist and Jain texts. The Buddhist Brahmahal Sutta lists four types or schools of skeptics along with 58 other schools of thought, while the Jain Sutrakirtunga lists 67 schools of skeptics among 363 different schools of thought. While the list is artificially constructed according to Jain categories, the four main schools of thought, Kriyavada, Akriyavada, Ajnanikavada, and Vanayikavada, and their subgroups must have existed. Thus, philosophical skepticism is thought to have appeared around this historic time frame. Topic: <laughs> Jain account. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> On Atman. The Ajnana claimed that the possibility of knowledge is doubtful since the claims to knowledge were mutually contradictory. Salanka quotes, They posit the theory that since those who claim knowledge make mutually contradictory assertions, they cannot be stating the truth. Regarding skeptics' point of view, Salanka in his commentary writes, as translated by Jayatilaka, for they i.e. the skeptics say that those who claim knowledge junianina, cannot be stating actual facts since their statements are mutually contradictory, for even with regard to the category of the soul, some assert that the soul is omnipresent sarvagatam, and other that it is not omnipresent asarvagatam. some say it is of the size of a digit angustapavamatram, others that it is of the size of a kernel of a grain of millet matram. some say it both has form and is formless some that it resides in the heart and others that it is located in the forehead etc. 
in respect of every category there is no uniformity in their assertion. The conflicting theories of Atman can be traced to early Upanishads. The idea of Atman, made of everything, Sarvamaya, Adamaya Adamaya would be omnipresent Sarvagatam, 4.4.5 while the transcendent Atman defined negatively 3.9.26 would not be so. Again at Katha 2.3.17 the Atman is of the size of a digit, while at Chandogya 3.14.3, the Atman is smaller than a kernel of a grain of millet. Again at Bradaranyaka 2.3.1, Brahman which is identical with the Atman is said, both to have form and also be formless. Likewise at Katha 2.3.17 the Atman, resides in the heart, while at Itareya Aranyaka 2.1.4.6 it is located in the head. On omniscience. In the same passage, Salanka continues, There is no one with an outstanding intellect whose statements may be regarded as authoritative, even if such a person existed, he cannot be discovered by one with a limited vision according to the maxim that, one who is not omniscient does not know everything. For it is said, how can one desiring to know that a certain person is omniscient at a certain time do so if he is devoid of that person's intellect, his knowledge and his consciousness? Owing to the absence of the knowledge of the means, it cannot properly be accomplished, it cannot be accomplished because of the mutual dependence of the two, for it is said. Without a super-knowledge the knowledge of the means is not attained and as a result there is no attainment of the super-knowledge of the object." This criticism of omniscience seems to be directed at those teachers who claimed omniscience, or to their followers who later claimed them to be omniscient, specifically the Jain leaders and Purana Kasapa, and maybe later to Makhali Gosala and the Buddha, on the basis of which they claimed to speak with authority. The dictum, that with a limited knowledge no one can know that any person is omniscient, may possibly be an old saying of the skeptics, and they may have extended the idea to say that since human intellect was limited, no one could claim to know everything with such limited intellect. The passage may also be seen as a critic on epistemology. Topic. on knowledge. In the same passage, Salanka further continues, Knowledge cannot completely comprehend the nature of the object of knowledge, for it is said, Whatever is apprehended should have the parts, near, middle and outer but here only the near part is apprehended and not the others since it is determined by it i.e. the nature of the object. As for the exhausting the atom paramanu pariyavasanata, with the knowledge of the near portion, considering the unrepresented parts out of the three parts, it is not possible to apprehend the atom by those with a limited vision owing to the excellence of its nature, therefore, since there is no omniscient person and since one who is not omniscient cannot comprehend the nature of an object as it is constituted, since all the theorists have conceived of the nature of the categories in a mutually contradictory manner and those who have claimed super-knowledge are at fault skepticism is best owing to the magnitude of the mistakes that arise from claims of knowledge. To the skeptics, none of the contending theories, proposed by limited intellect, can be known to be true, since they are mutually contradictory. Also, any new theory is bound to contradict existing theories, and hence cannot be true. Hence nothing can be known to be true. Thus the skeptics conclude that the contradictions of metaphysics and the impossibility of omniscience leads them to accept skepticism. In a similar vein, the skeptics held that skepticism is the best since it is difficult to gauge the thought process of another. This may also be the reason why the skeptics held to another dictum that all teachings are like the utterances of barbarians since they have no epistemic basis. 
Likewise, Sri Lanka comments, "...owing to the difficulty of knowing another's mind, they do not grasp what is intended by the words of their teacher and thus repeat the other's words like a barbarian without understanding the real meaning." Regarding this passage and the maxims on knowledge, Jayatilika compares the skeptic's views with that of the Greek sophist Gorgias, as given in his book, Nature or the Non-Existent, and proposes that the skeptics may have arrived at their position using similar lines of reasoning. According to Jayatik's interpretation of the passage given by Salanka, perception is divided into near, middle, and outer, and we perceive only the near, so each person's view of what they see of an object will be different according their perspective. Since our knowledge depends on our individual perspective, the knowledge would be subjective since different person will have differing perspectives. In the absence of objectivity, there is no knowledge and all private experiences of impressions of different individuals would be incommunicable. <laughs> Futility of knowledge According to Sri Lanka, the skeptics conceive that even if there was knowledge it is useless since it has many disadvantages This quotation suggests that the skeptics preferred skepticism not just on intellectual basis, but also for pragmatic or moral reasons. What these disadvantages are, Sri Lanka does not elaborate, but can be found in the Buddhist sources. Regarding the futility of knowledge, Sri Lanka puts these questions of the skeptics. Who knows that the soul exists? Of what use is this knowledge? Who knows that the soul does not exist? Of what use is this knowledge? The Sutrakirtunga affirms that the skeptics teach final beatitude and final deliverance. Thus, the skeptics may have contended that knowledge is not necessary for salvation but tapas, which seems similar to karmapatha. <laughs> On psychological states Sri Lanka in his commentary mentions 67 types of skeptics. However, these 67 types are obtained combinatorially by taking nine categories of Jainism, each with seven forms of predication to give 63 nine times seven forms of skeptical questions, which were considered to represent 63 types of skeptics asking these questions. The last four types were added to complete the list of 67 types. However, according to Jayatilika, these last four types may represent the kind of questions the skeptics themselves might have asked. The last four questions are Who knows whether there is an arising of psychological states? Who knows whether there is no arising of psychological states? Who knows whether there is and is no arising of psychological states? Who knows whether the arising of psychological states is impredicable? Such psychological speculations seem to be rife during this era, as evinced in Pali Nikayas, especially the Potapada Sutta. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Buddhist account. In the Pali texts, the skeptics are nicknamed Amaravikapikas, which translates as eel wrigglers, probably in reference to their verbal jugglery. They are collectively spoken of as some recluse and Brahmins who wriggle like eels. For when a question is put to them on this or that matter, they resort to verbal jugglery and eel wriggling on four grounds. Brahmajala Sutta describes four schools of skepticism, the first three of whom advocated skepticism on the basis of fear of falsehood fear of involvement and fear of interrogation in debate respectively, which all of them considered undesirable since it led to remorse or worry, and which led to a moral danger. 
While these three schools seem to have valued mental equanimity, it appears that the fourth school of skeptics, associated with the philosopher Sanjaya Balathaputta, did not share this value. A notable commonality among all these schools is the arrangement of propositions according to five-fold logic, alongside the usual two-fold mode and the four-fold mode common in Pali Nikayas. The fifth mode is given as the denial of denials, that is, the rejection of the dialectician's view. <laughs> first school The first school is described in the Brahmajala Sutta. Herein a certain recluse or Brahman does not understand, as it really is, that this is good or this is evil and it occurs to him, I do not understand what is good or evil as it really is. Not understanding what is good or evil, as it really is, if I were to assert that this is good and this is evil, that will be due to my likes, desires, aversions, or resentments. If it were due to my likes, desires, aversions or resentments, it would be wrong. And if I were wrong, it would cause me worry and worry would be a moral danger to me Thus, through fear of being wrong and the abhorrence of being wrong, he does not assert anything to be good or evil and on questions being put to him on this or that matter he resorts to verbal jugglery and eel wriggling, saying, I do not say so, I do not say thus, I do not say otherwise, I do not say no, I deny the denials, literally, I do not say, no, no. In the absence of adequate information, the skeptics prudently recommend suspension of judgment. The skeptics felt that it was not just intellectual dishonest, but also morally dangerous not to do so. However, according to Jayatilaka, this was probably not a temporary suspension of judgment, until new information could come by to make a better evaluation, but rather it was meant to be a permanent state of affair by outright denying the very possibility of knowledge, and hence of questions regarding morality. Thus, the skepticism is motivated by both intellectual as well as moral reasoning i.e. fear of asserting falsehood due to one's prejudices. They seem to have contended that knowledge was not necessary for salvation but for karma patha. <inaudible> second school The second school of skeptics is described in Brahmajala Sutta in similar terms as the first, except that for them to be led to believe in a proposition by one's likes, desires, aversions, and resentments would be entanglement and such entanglement would be a source of worry and as such a moral danger According to Jayatilaka, this group adopted skepticism mainly due to morality, since to do so otherwise would lead to lead to worry and mental disquietude viata, and not necessarily due to the considerations of rebirth, as understood according to the Buddhist connotation of the word, entanglement. <laughs> Third school In Brahmajala Sutta, the third school of skepticism is shown to put forward such arguments in support for their viewpoint. I do not know, as it really is, what is good and what is evil and not knowing, if I were to pronounce that this is good or this is evil, then I would have to join issue, argue and debate with recluses and Brahmins, learned, subtle, hair-splitters, skilled in controversy, who go about debunking with their intellect the theories of others. If I were to join issue, argue and debate with them, I would no be able to explain to them. If I were unable to explain to them, that would cause me worry and be moral danger Thus because he fears and detests interrogation he does not pronounce this to be good nor that to be evil. According to Jayatilaka, it is not clear from this passage if they wished to avoid debate because they were skeptics or whether they adopted skepticism because they wanted to avoid debate. According to him, it is probable that they would have seen no point in debate since one was nowhere nearer the truth at the end of it and at the same time feared debate because it could result in loss of their mental equanimity with they valued.
Topic: <laughs> Fourth School. The fourth school of skepticism described in Brahmajala Sutta is associated with Sanjaya Balathaputta, whose views are also recorded in the Samanaphala Sutta, since identical language is used to describe them. Sanjaya is described as a contemporary of the Buddha, as a well-known and celebrated teacher, and as a leader of a sect who was held in high esteem by the common folk. He is said to have taught Sariputta and Moggallana, before their conversion to Buddhism. In Brahmajala Sutta, this fourth school of skeptics is described as thus. Herein a certain recluse or Brahman is dull, stupid. And by reason of his dullness and stupidity, when questioned on this or that matter, he resorts to verbal jugglery or eel wriggling. If you ask me whether there is a next world, then if it were to occur to me that there is a next world, I would pronounce that there is a next world. Yet, I do not say so, I do not say thus, I do not say otherwise, I do not say no, I deny the denials. Similarly with regard to the propositions. There is no next world. Quote, comma, quote. There is and is not a next world. Quote, comma, quote. There neither is nor is not a next world. Quote, comma, quote. There are beings who survive death. Quote, comma, quote. There are no beings who survive. Quote, comma, quote. There are and are no beings who survive. Quote, comma, quote. There neither are nor are there no beings who survive. Quote, comma, quote. There is a result and a consequence of good and evil actions. Quote, comma, quote. There is no result or consequence of good or evil actions. Quote, comma, quote. The perfect one tathagato, exists after death. Quote, comma, quote. The perfect one does not exist after death. Quote, comma, quote. The perfect one both exists and does not exist after death. Quote, comma, quote. The perfect one neither exists nor does not exist after death. Quote, quote. A similar account is given in the Samanaphala Sutta. In both the accounts, the stupidity of this school is emphasized, highlighting the antipathy that the Buddhists felt about this school. In the Brahmajala Sutta, out of 62 philosophical schools mentioned, this school is singled out as being a product of sheer stupidity. Whereas in the Samanaphala Sutta, Ajatasattu singles out Sanjaya as the most foolish and stupid. Notable in this account of the fourth school of skepticism is the lack of concern for good life and peace of mind, which the previous three schools regarded as desirable, and hence their advocacy of skepticism. Jayatilaka states that Sanjaya may have been a more thoroughgoing skeptic, to the point of being skeptical about a skeptic's way of life, and as such might have been a more vocal critic of his opponents and their regard for mental tranquility, valued by the Buddhists as well. Judging by the propositions listed, Sanjaya's skepticism seems to have encompassed both metaphysics and morality. Sanjaya seems to grant the possibility of the truth, while denying the possibility of knowing this. Topic: <coughs> Criticisms. <coughs> 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 The Jains criticized the skeptics by pointing out that the skepticism should lead them to the conclusion that they know nothing whatsoever, yet they assert the knowledge of the skepticism and claim to know such propositions as, "...ignorance is best." Salanka criticizes the skeptic's belief, that one cannot know what is on another's mind, saying, the inner mind of another can be apprehended by his external features, gestures, movements, gait, speech and the changes in his eyes and face. Topic. Influence Although criticized by the Buddhists as eel wrigglers, in the Pali Canon, the Buddha is depicted negating various the fourfold logical alternatives or katuskoti when posed with metaphysical questions, which is similar to the logic employed by the Ajnanans. However, all four schools of Ajnanans arrange their logic as five-fold formula, which seems to be based on the acceptance of the four-fold formula. 
This may mean that such logical schema was a common feature of the pre-Buddhist era. Alternatively, since there is no known school of Indian thinkers apart from the Buddhist who adopted a four-fold logical schema, and since all skeptical schools are depicted to have the five-fold formula of denial, which seems to be based on the acceptance of a four-fold form of predication, this may suggest the four-fold schema to be the Buddhist invention. Indeed, two of the foremost disciples of Buddha, Sariputta and Moggallana, were initially the students of Sanjaya, and a strong element of skepticism is found in early Buddhism, most particularly in the Atharkavaga Sutra. The Katuskoti was later used as a tool by Nagarjuna to formulate his influential brand of Madhyamaka philosophy. Since skepticism is a philosophical attitude and a style of philosophizing rather than a position, the Ajnanans may have influenced other skeptical thinkers of India like Nagarjuna, Jairasi Bhatta, and Sriharsha. According to Diogenes Laetius, the Greek philosopher Pyrrho developed his skeptical philosophy in India when Pyrrho was there during the conquest of Alexander the Great. Based on the so called Aristocles passage, Jayatilaka draws many similarities between his philosophy and the Indian philosophies current at the time. In particular, he lists the following 1. There were no beliefs or opinions which were true or false and therefore 2. we should give no positive answer to any of the logical alternatives. It would also be seen that three, the four logical alternatives mentioned in Timon's account i.e. is, is not, both is and is not, neither is nor is not are identical with that of Sanjaya, the Buddhists and perhaps also of the three schools of skeptics. Lastly, four, the value of the skeptical attitude is said by Pyrrho to lie in the fact that it promotes speechlessness aphasia, and mental imperturbability ataraxia. Scholars including Barua, Jayatilaka, and Flintoff, contend that Pyrrho was influenced by, or at the very least agreed with, Indian skepticism rather than Buddhism or Jainism, based on the fact that he valued ataraxia, which can be translated as, freedom from worry. Jayatilaka in particular contends that Pyrrho may have been influenced by the first three school of Ajnana, since they too valued freedom from worry. If this is true, then the methods of the Ajnanans may be preserved in the extent work by Sextus Empiricus. See also Astika and Nastika Ajivika Charvaka Philosophical skepticism Sramana Topic Notes Topic Sources Barua, Banimadab, nineteen twenty one. A History of Pre Buddhistic Indian Philosophy, First Ed. London, University of Calcutta. p. four hundred and sixty eight. Flintoff, Everard, nineteen eighty. Pyrrho and India. Phronesis. Brill, twenty five, one eighty eight to one hundred and eight. JSTOR 4182084. Jayatilaka, K. N. Early Buddhist Theory of Knowledge, PDF, 1st ed. London, George Allen and Unwin Ltd. p. 524. Matilal, B. K. Skepticism. Logical and Ethical Issues, and Essays on Indian Philosophy of Religion, 2nd ed. India, Orient Black Swan. pp. 52 75. Warder, Anthony K. 1998. Lokayata, Ajavaka, and Ajnana Philosophy. A Course in Indian Philosophy. 2nd ed. Delhi, Motilal Banasidas Publishers. pp. 32 44. ISBN 9 trillion seven hundred and eighty eight billion one hundred and twenty million eight hundred and twelve thousand four hundred and forty four